Hi, I'm Michael Odie. I'm a SolarWinds contributor and president of Tekka Inc. And today we're going to look at managing SQL Server with PowerShell. Uh, this is part two of, uh, of the series here that we're covering. Part one, we covered the basics about using the SQL PS module and how to import it. And this time we're going to look at some basic uh, management tasks that you can perform with PowerShell. So first, we're going to have a quick review of uh, how you get the SQL PS module imported. Then we're going to look at a few different tasks. We're going to look at working with the SQL Server services with PowerShell, how you can set server properties and view them, as well as how you can backup and restore databases. So first, with the SQL Server uh, PS module, you can import it by using the command that you see here, the import module command, specifying SQL PS, and using the disable name checking uh, parameter to uh, stop any errors because of uh, minor uh, differences between the way SQL Server and PowerShell names things. So once you've done this, you can then navigate uh, your SQL Server instances very much like you could navigate to uh, a normal Windows file system directory. And here you see an, an example of using the dir command, uh, specifying a SQL Server uh, instance that's named uh, SQL 2014-1, and uh, looking at the different navigation nodes that are within that that server instance and you can drill into any of these areas for instance if you wanted to uh, see the different databases you could go in and look there and uh, dig out even to the table level and to the and to the data level so now let's talk a little bit about working with services uh, you can list the various services by using the git service command like you can see here this top example will list all the service names that have the letter SQL in them. And so that will list out all of our SQL services. If you want to see the ones that are just running, the second command shows you there. We're getting the services that are named SQL. And then we're looking at the status of that of those objects and we're picking out just the ones that are running so that shows us the running commands next if you want to stop the service or start the service you can use the commandlets that you see at the bottom this like you might guess the stop service commandlet stops the service you give it the service name that you want to use and if you want it to stop immediately you can add in the force parameter and if you want to start the service uh, you use that start service commandlet and again you pass in the name of the service that you want to start MS SQL Server is the name of the default SQL Server instance. You can also use PowerShell to list your server properties. Uh, here we're showing using the SQL PS module, uh, importing it, and then creating a, a server object by using the PowerShell get item commandlet and passing it in an instance of our SQL Server where we're taking uh, the local host and creating a server instance. And then with, from that server object, we're looking at the configuration properties and you can list them out from there. And I'll show you what this is like in just a second. Next, let's talk a little bit about backing up databases and we can see how to do that. Uh, you can back up databases using the backup SQL database command. It's explicitly for uh, SQL Server uh, databases. You pass in the server instance name, the database name you're looking for, and the backup action parameter controls what kind of backup you're going to do. Uh, it supports the values of uh, database, uh, log, or file, depending on what sort of backup you want to perform. And the second line here shows an actual instance of this command being used where we're passing it in a server instance named SQL 2016.2, specifying the database of AdventureWorks 2016 CPP3 and the backup action database, meaning we're going to back up the entire database. Uh, if you want to, you can add a little bit of extra logic here to back up all of the user databases. And this little bit of PowerShell code at the bottom here shows you how to do this, and you'll see this running in just a second. Uh, we set the location to our local SQL Server instance in the databases node. Uh, we're going to get the, the child items, which means we're going to list all of the different database names that are out there, and pass that into the backup SQL database commandlet. And then for each of these databases, we are going to basically retrieve a date timestamp and the name of the database. And so we're going to concatenate those together, and that's what we're going to name our backup files. So it's basically a backup of the database name along with the date and timestamp. And you'll see that in action here in just a second. And restoring databases is much like that. Uh, with restore databases, you can use the restore SQL database commandlet. Again, you pass in that server instance, the database name, 
and in this case the backup file where your SQL Server backup is located. At the bottom of the screen you can see an example of how that's actually used. We're passing in the server instance of SQL 2016-2, again restoring the database of AdventureWorks 2016 uh, CTP3, and the backup file is at our default SQL Server backup location in the SQL Server directory MS SQL backup adventure works and it's a back file and we're using here the replace database command uh, to replace the database and you can see using PowerShell and SQL Server is pretty simple and it's pretty powerful as you combine it into scripts now let's jump over and see some of this in action so first let's go ahead and we're going to open up PowerShell ISE that's the integrated scripting environment for PowerShell and then we're going to start by looking at the services uh, section here. So let's get all the services that have SQL in them. So we'll run this selection, and there you go. You can see their status. Some are running, some are stopped. If we want to get just those services that have the status of running, here we go. We'll run this where the status equals running. You can see we've definitely come up with a shorter list. If we want to stop a service, we can give it a service name like uh, MS SQL Server provide the force parameter to force it to stop the SQL Server service and run our selection and you can see now it's going to go ahead and uh, stop the SQL Server service it takes it just a second to do that and then if we want to start the service we can go ahead and run the start service commandlet so managing SQL Server and the services it's all about the same you pass in the commandlet name and then um, use the start or stop service commandlet so pretty easy there Next, what if we want to look at some of the server configuration properties? Here's an example of how to do that. We're going to import that SQL module, and then we're going to go ahead and create a new server object called server and look at its properties. So let's go ahead and get that running. In this case, we're retrieving the server properties of the SQL Server service. And there they are. And if we scroll through this list, we can pretty much see all the things that are out there. So you can see that it's giving us a display name, a number of other properties, a description, run value, configuration value, pretty much all the properties so that you can pretty much see uh, if you are using SQL Server Management Studio, file stream access level, backup compression, default settings, all of those sorts of things. Now let's switch gears and we'll look at backing up databases and we can back up using the backup SQL database commandlet like you can see here. Passing in the server instance, the database name that we're going to back up and our backup action, backing up the database, uh, the log files or uh, database files. In this case we're going to back up um, the entire database and you can see it running here. It takes it just a second of course to do the backup and in this case since we didn't specify the backup location it's going to go ahead and use SQL Server's default backup location and it takes it just a second for the backup to run and you can see our progress bar while it's doing that in this case backing up the AdventureWorks CTP3 database if we wanted to restore that database we could go down and run the restore SQL database command that you see here and we'll run that selection again passing in the server instance the database name where the backup file location is at so we'll go ahead and run that and you can see of course as always restores always take a little bit longer than backups do but it's in the process of uh, restoring our AdventureWorks database and we specified the replace database file uh, parameter out here so it's going to replace that database when the restoration completes It'll take it just a second here and we'll skip to the end. Now that the restore database command is completed, let's take a look at running a little script that will go ahead and back up all the user databases here. And here is our script and it's setting the location uh, to our default SQL Server instance in the databases node. We're getting the children node of that and backing up or in using the SQL or the backup SQL database commandlet for each command that's in there. And for each of the backup files, we're going to concatenate the database name along with a date and time stamp. And so when we run it, it is going to go ahead and create each of our backup files with a unique database name that it's backing up and the time that it is backing up that database. So let's go ahead and run this. And this is going to take it a little while, but you can see it's going to go through and back up the different databases. We'll check back in here in just a second as it progresses through. 
You can see it's gone ahead and backed up the AdventureWorks database and our Report Server database and our Report Server Temp database. So next, we're going to go ahead and have a quick look at our backup file directories as soon as this completes. So our script is finished. Let's go ahead and pull up our backup directory. And inside it there, you can see our database backup from when we ran the, the backup SQL database command by itself. And then the backups that we had when we ran it using our database name and date timestamp. And that's the end of this presentation on managing SQL Server with PowerShell Part 2. Thank you for watching.